Regenerative medicine is, a, is an exciting field. It's really a new chapter of medicine because it has the potential to transform the way we treat our patients. So far, medical practice has primarily been able to offer so-called palliative care. In other words, in treating our patients, we are primarily affecting the symptoms of disease rather than the root cause of the problem. But with regenerative medicine technologies that are based on the use of stem cells, now for the first time we may be able to go indeed towards cures for disease. However, despite advances in stem cell platforms, one of the main limitations is the efficacy of these cells. How well can they heal? How well can they repair? And in this recent study from the Mayo Clinic, what has been discovered are ways to enhance, to boost the ability of stem cells, adult stem cells, uh, to indeed repair damaged tissue and more specifically repair an infarcted heart, a heart that has suffered uh, from, from a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. This technology is indeed very promising uh, and potentially could be applied beyond the heart itself and it's based in essence on promoting stem cells to acquire a faith that is similar to the one that, uh, of the tissue that they are to replace. So in this particular case, stem cells have been coached, have been programmed uh, to become pre-cardiac cells on their way to create new, fresh heart muscle and repair the diseased or dead heart muscle after the heart attack. Similar approaches could be conceived in repairing potentially other organs such as the brain, bones, cartilage, pancreas, in which case stem cells will be coached to become, let's say, a neuronal cell, a pancreatic cell, or a new bone cell. The particular excitement here as well is that this technology is not only at this stage a bench discovery, but it has provided a foundation, a proof of principle to move from the bench towards product development en route to uh, more broader clinical applications. And indeed, in this regard, this technology has already been uh, applied in scaling up the process, which is a critical step toward translating it into practice. And specifically, an initial group of 45 patients have received the so-called coach stem cell, or smart stem cells, as we call them, uh, in cases of previous myocardial heart attacks, myocardial infarctions and these patients are now being followed. So the technology is now beyond really a bench experimental study and it's en route to full clinical trials. As with all new therapies, it's very critical to be um, stepwise in our approaches to first of all ensure the safety and feasibility of these processes. So the safety will be done, as mentioned already, on a very careful analysis of 45 patients that will be followed for a number of months, in fact, a couple of years, uh, before uh, these uh, approaches can be applied to a broader population. But already in 2011, 2012, we anticipate that a larger group of patients, roughly 240, 250 patients, will be further involved towards what we call the efficacy uh, phase of clinical trials, the next phase of clinical trials, which is a pivotal phase as uh, these products are being further assessed uh, before they uh, can receive permission for broader clinical use. We have learned that the approaches that have been developed indeed for model system, for experimental system, for animal studies can be scaled up for human use. So that was a very first important uh, uh, determination. The second aspect is that the technology is feasible. In other words, it is possible to deliver this cell, and we have not failed in any of the attempts that we had in delivering these cells into injured hearts. So that is already a very important aspect. We are now analyzing the data in terms of overall safety, but all the patients are indeed uh, in good standing, and we have not had any, um, let's say, death or any major uh, side effects uh, during, during the clinical trial.